All right, people, we have a very special recipe on tap for today. Recently, I hosted a brunch in the DC area. We were serving jerk barbecue short ribs and we ran out of short ribs. So what do we use? Oxtail. So today I'm gonna to show you my recipe for jerk barbecue oxtail. Meet me in the kitchen, let's make it happen. All right, guys, we're gonna get the party started with a nice marinade. We're gonna keep it nice and simple today. We have some uh, green seasoning from Walker's Wood. You feel free to make your own from scratch, but they make a really good product. They're not a sponsor. Uh, but they are solid. I like their product the best probably, in my opinion. We're going in with two tablespoons of green seasoning and two tablespoons of jerk seasoning. I like the mild version. The hot is, is hot. They're not lying when they put hot on the label. It's the real deal. But for me, I like the mild. Let's throw a little extra in there. Make it three tablespoons. Once we have that in there, we're gonna add one lime, the juice of one lime. Hopefully it's a juicy one, and it is. There we go. That's what you want when you get a lime at the store right there. All limes aren't created equal. Next up, we're going in with two tablespoons of jerk seasoning as well. Save a little bit for later, plus a quarter cup of brown sugar. You can add more or less depending on your spice tolerance. I'm gonna add a teaspoon of browning as well. It's gonna help add that nice, deep, dark, rich color that you're used to seeing when you get oxtail. And then I'm also gonna add about a quarter cup or so of low sodium soy sauce. Finally, we're gonna add a little AP just to cover our bases and then some pimento seed and then some allspice. I like to use the ground allspice for the marinade. We'll use the whole pimento seed or pimento berry to go into the actual braising liquid. Break out your whisk and give it a mix. Next, we're going in with a tablespoon of ginger paste. I'm gonna leave the garlic out of the marinade because we're gonna use a whole head of garlic in the braising liquid. I don't want it to be too overpowering. So a little ginger going in. You can taste and adjust as needed. But that right there, my friends, is a fantastic jerk marinade for your oxtail, for your chicken, whatever you feel like, you know, making today. All right, guys, so we have four pounds of oxtail here, different sizes. We got the hockey puck, and then we have the perfectly trimmed oxtail as well. Come from different piece, you know, parts of the tail. There would be different levels of thickness. We we'll go ahead and clean these up, add a little lime juice, some cold water. Make sure you get in there with your hands and just make sure that you you know, wash off any bone fragments or cartilage or anything that you wouldn't want to eat. All right, so once the oxtail is nice and clean, we're gonna go ahead and add in our marinade. Make sure you get all of that out of there. No flavor left behind. You guys know the drill. Then we're gonna get in there with the hands and massage that in. Just really make sure that the oxtail is nicely coated in that marinade as well. Let this marinate overnight or at least for two hours is what you want. Really let that flavor kind of penetrate the meat a bit. And then we're gonna get this cooking. You can do it in the pressure cooker for about 55 minutes on the high setting, or you can braise it low and slow in the oven at 325 for about three, three and a half hours. All right guys, so for the braising liquid, we're gonna have a little bit of veggie. We got some carrots, we got some green onion, we got a yellow onion, we got a scotch bonnet or a habanero pepper, and then we have a whole head of garlic. We're gonna add that to the braising liquid to add flavor. Really no right or wrong way to do this. And honestly, it's just there for flavor, so it doesn't even have to look pretty. That's why we're not peeling the carrots. I'm gonna go ahead and get our onion prepped. Just gonna chop that into quarters. Again, it's just gonna impart its flavor into the braising liquid. Then we're doing the same thing with the whole head of garlic. No need to do anything but chop the end piece off. I'm gonna put it in there just like that. Now, my friends, it's time for the most important part when it comes to braising anything that you want to cook. We're going to go ahead and sear the meat. So we have a skillet or a Dutch oven heated over medium high. We're going to add a little avocado oil and then we're going to add our oxtail. Press down so it makes good surface area contact with the skillet. We're going to sear it in batches. And then we're going to remove it and do the same thing with the veggies. Got 
All right guys, so once the oxtail has been seared, we're gonna go ahead and remove that. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the veggies. Let those start to release their flavor. Going down with the garlic first, followed by the onions. Let's get it in there, get it nice and toasty. And then we're gonna deglaze with the beef broth, the remaining uh, marinade from earlier. That's gonna be smelling good in here. A little thyme, the fresh herbs, the kind you cook with, not the kind that cook you. Let's get in there and start kind of scraping that bottom, get that fond up off of there. Tons of flavor building in here, guys. We got a habanero or a scotch bonnet. If you want it extra spicy, you can cut this up. I'm gonna leave it whole. So next we're going in with four cups of beef broth. This is no salt added, so I'm gonna season this pretty heavily. You always wanna taste it as you go. If you got the, you know, the, the high sodium version of the beef broth, you probably don't need to add as much seasoning. Next, no flavor left behind. As I always say, we're gonna scrape all that marinade up out of that bowl and into our braising liquid. We may even add a little extra. All right, so we're just gonna give that a good little mix. Get our oxtail in there. A little bit more jerk seasoning. And then in goes the oxtail. I like to put the larger pieces at the bottom. That way they can kind of be submerged a little bit more. And then the thinner pieces will be at the top. That'll help them to cook a little bit more evenly. It's kind of impossible for them all to cook at the same exact rate being that they're significantly different in thickness. But that's the best way to kind of offset that a little bit. All right, we're gonna bring that up to a simmer, cover it with the lid, pop it in the oven at 325, and check on it in about two and a half hours. Once the oxtail is done, we're gonna remove it from our braising liquid, let that cool for a second. We're gonna strain this off and turn it into a gravy. To that, we're gonna add the jerk barbecue sauce and then add our oxtail to that, let it get nice and glazed, plate it up over some rice. Can't go wrong. So, all you need for this is a little strainer. Try not to make a mess. All right guys, now it's time to make our gravy. We've got our heat on medium high. We're gonna bring this up to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, we're gonna add a slurry. Now a slurry is just equal parts water and cornstarch. That's gonna immediately thicken up your gravy. Now for the secret sauce that I just got all over my fingers. That's gonna mellow things out just a little bit. If it's a little bit too spicy, you could also add a little brown sugar if you want to. I want to turn the heat down and just give that a good mix. All right guys, so once you have your jerk barbecue gravy right where you want it, we're gonna add back in those oxtails to bring them back up to temperature and let the sauce really coat them nicely. I'm gonna bring that to a simmer and then we're gonna plate these up. These are super tender, falling off the bone. Can't go wrong with this one. Oh, almost lost one. Can't lose any oxtail when they're $13 a pound. This is the part where I say, brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me, guys, looking good. The only thing left to do is digging for the taste test, but before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right, people, I found my fork. Let's do a little tenderness check. As you can see, coming right off the bone with ease. Let's get in there with your hands, why not, right? A little extra gravy, baby. My favorite part of the job. Here we go. Mm. Can't leave that bite out. Mm. You can't play. Go. You can't do it Sleep. Out. Very good for the rice. Mm -hmm.